Clarence Purvis. A 90-year-old man of his word. Eats lunch every day with a picture of his late spouse. And when he was inquired why. Everybody had to hold back their tears. It was lunchtime in a small-town burger joint in Georgia, USA. A tall man in a suit hurried through the entryway. Talking on his cell phone. His title was Travis Howard. And he appeared to be frantically searching for a table. But the put was at most extreme capacity. And all the chairs showed up to be possessed. He as it were found one purged chair over the table from a man. Who appeared to be over 90 a long time ancient. He was having lunch alone but. For a few reason. Had two chairs at his table. The man within the suit chosen to hold up many minutes. But time passed. And no one appeared to be with the more seasoned man. So, without saying anything. He took the purge chair from the table and carried it to the counter to sit down. And have his dinner. The more seasoned man got up and inquired why he had taken his chair. Without inquiring authorization. The youthful man fair looked up and giggled marginally. Why ought to I got to inquire you for an unused chair, sir? It was purge. And you were clearly eating your lunch alone. The senior looked the man immovably within the eye and said he was not alone. But went with by his spouse. Indicating to the picture outline on the table. There were two pictures within the picture outline. One in dark and white of a youthful lady and a more later one. In color, of a more seasoned woman. Travis Howard felt confounded and didn't precisely get at what was going on. Even though he was in a rush. He gave the chair back to the more seasoned man since a family. At a adjacent table had fair cleared out, clearing out four other chairs empty. He sat back down and kept attempting to figure out what was going on. As he observed the man eat his lunch with a picture outline. Inevitably, the more seasoned man taken note the more youthful man's gazes and motioned for him to come closer. As he drawn closer, the ancient man said, Are you misplaced or fair inquisitive? I see merely keep gazing at me. So if it's not too much trouble, take your chair and sit with us. The man was so inquisitive that he overlooked he was late for an assembly. He sat at the table with the man and his pictures. Not knowing that he would before long be battling to hold back tears. From the story he was almost to listen. In 1948, 17-year-old Clarence Purvis was venturing out. For his week-by-week -week visit to the barbershop. It appeared to be a day like every other, Clarence would do errands. Within the morning and work within the shoe shop with his father. Within the evening. But he had an odd feeling that this day would be a really extraordinary one. Fulfilled with his hairstyle. He cleared out the barbershop and headed to work. It would be in shock for him to go out and open. Without his hair cut and styled flawlessly. The young man was on edge to urge domestics since his mother. Was planning his favorite supper for dinner. Chicken brown steak with pounded potatoes and sauce. So, 15 minutes sometime recently the hour. He took advantage of the truth that his father had gone domestic early. And chosen to begin closing the shop. In any case, the entryway chime rang. Demonstrating a modern client was entering the store. With his back still turned. Clarence said. Sorry, we are closing presently. Come back tomorrow. But when he turned around. He saw an incredibly excellent youthful lady who showed up to be approximately his age and whom he had never seen some time recently. Clarence was so charmed by her excellence that he couldn't indeed find the words. Great evening. I ponder in the event that you may make an special case. I have a ball to go to tomorrow. But my heel fare broke, explained the youthful lady. Clarence instantly answered that he would make an special case. And offer assistance her. She giggled given him the heels and said she would be back for them at 10 o'clock the taking after day the youthful man concurred and his plans to shut the store early were soon forgotten 
The minute the lady strolled out the door, he started to alter her shoes, working difficult to form them look as wonderful as conceivable. Clarence considered how he may attempt to inspire her the following day. Where is this move she's reaching to tomorrow, he thought. When he got home and sat at the dinner table with his guardians, he was filled with an interesting vitality that everybody famous. His mother inquired. That energized sea all over can't fair be for the nourishment. Let me know Clarence. What's the genuine reason for that senseless grin? The youthful man said he had met the lady he was planning to wed. His guardian's fair snickered. Recollecting their strong, energetic days. And proceeded getting a charge out of the charming supper. The next day. The young man arrived at the shoe store before his father. He had put on his best clothes and was anxious to meet the girl. With the high heels again. The young man realized that he had been so nervous the day before. That he had not even asked her name. Suddenly, the chime at the store's entrance rang. And Clarence, who was in the back, ran to answer it. It was her, the beautiful mystery woman. Clarence was a friendly fellow. And his playful manner helped him during the conversation with the young woman. He handed over the shoes and found out that her name was Carolyn. He also got the address and time of the dance. We'll see you there. Carolyn said as she waved goodbye. That afternoon, the young man hurried to his cousin's house. And borrowed a sharp suit that he had recently bought. Then, unbeknownst to his father. He borrowed the newly repaired shoes of a wealthy customer. And felt ready to win over the woman of his dreams. Arriving at the dance. Clarence quickly spotted Carolyn from afar and greeted her shyly. Even though both were a little nervous. They had a great evening and danced late into the night. Yet, they needed a proper conversation. So they arranged to meet at a snack bar in the neighborhood the next day. From then on, everything went wonderfully well. And it wasn't long before the two started dating. And felt that nothing in the world could separate them. But unfortunately, war was approaching, as U.S. involvement in World War II increased and tensions heightened. Young men like Clarence were drafted overnight and forced to drop everything instantly to enter the military. At a time when long-distance communication was done through letters, the young man could not even let his beloved know what was happening. It was his parents who notified Carolyn of his departure. During the war, Clarence tried to exchange letters with his parents and with Carolyn. But because he was moved around constantly, due to the intensity of the confrontation, this was almost impossible. Yet, he never stopped thinking about her. Not even for a day. The young man returned after a hard ten months in combat. Because of the crisis that was devastating the country. His father closed the old shoe store and moved the family to another town. By a treacherous stroke of fate. He could not find Carolyn at all. He went to his old hometown and asked everyone he could about the woman. But no one knew where she was. Apparently, Carolyn had also moved away. But he didn't let that hinder him and continued searching for her. For more than ten years. He didn't even consider dating others while he searched. His parents and friends thought the man was going crazy. But he just replied that he was crazy, crazy in love. By the age of 28. Clarence had become a skilled mechanic. He had learned to repair cars during the war and decided to invest in a new business with his father. When a customer's motorcycle broke down in the middle of a trip, Clarence traveled across the country to California to repair it. He had always wanted to visit the state. And this would be the perfect opportunity. After the repair, the veteran took advantage of a nearby barber shop to give his hair and beard a treat. He entered, sat down on a stool, and picked a magazine to read while waiting his turn. While he waited, he noticed that people in California were quite fond of talking about their lives. After hearing the most varied stories from other customers, 
An older man looked at Clarence and asked him. What about you, boy? What's your story? Clarence shyly told how he had fallen in love. But he never found his beloved again because of the war. Since returning from the front lines more than ten years ago. He has been looking for the love of his life. The young man told this expecting to hear laughter from the other men. After all, he thought his story was a little silly. And no one ever truly understood him. Only he knew how strong his love for Carolyn was. But, instead of laughter. He noticed a similar expression on all their faces. As if they were shocked by something. The barber stared at Clarence and motioned him to step forward. And sit in the chair. He obeyed the man. And as he sat down. He heard the most wonderful news in his life. The barber began to cut his hair. As the hair fell to the floor. He revealed that his daughter had also been obsessed. Searching for a mysterious man for over ten years. Not a day went by without her talking about it. Her name is Carolyn. But I guess you already know that, don't you, Clarence? Because apparently. You are the man she is looking for, said the man with scissors clicking in his hand. The incredible coincidence was surreal. The barber was, in fact. Carolyn's father. He explained that they moved to California. As the war got worse. Because the move had caused her to lose contact with the one true love of her life. His daughter went months without speaking to him. At the time. I thought she was making a big deal out of nothing. She was still young and had her whole life ahead of her. There would be other men. But seeing you now. I can understand that I was wrong. Very wrong, said the barber. Clarence hadn't said a word yet, he couldn't believe what he was hearing. When Father Gregory found himself in an unsafe circumstance. He responded in an astounding way. That might have driven to a loathsome hypothesis. He didn't know that a camera was observing him. And shooting the whole experience. But when individuals found out. They were cleared out stunned. In a little wide open town. The cloister and church were the center of the town's life and exercises. This conventional community had a solid devout framework. By which they worked. The rhythm and stream of reaching to mass. Singing their tunes. And doing great deeds lovely much depicted the culture of this town. When Father Michael kicked the bucket. After numerous devoted a long time of benefit. The ward was at a misfortune. How would they ever supplant their kind and dependable cleric? See separated. A youthful cleric was holding up for his calling. After examining in Rome for a time. He knew that he required to take off his local arrive. And serve wherever God may send him. This conviction was so solid that he declined numerous prestigious positions. Within the church until the day he listened. That a small town had misplaced its adored cleric and was frantic to fill that void. With exceptionally few natural assets. Father Gregory pressed up his life and moved to the ward of the town. He knew small approximately the individuals. And they knew small around him. But Father Gregory was enthusiastic to live out his calling. The community taken after very a conventional approach to things. So it was no ponder there was a part of skepticism among the parish. This youthful, lively cleric did not fit the shape they needed to put him in. So, the primary few months were challenging for all parties included. Luckily, Father Gregory had the wisdom not to drastically alter anything. He would make little alterations to things whereas spreading a parcel of delight and thoughtfulness within the community. Father Gregory adored individuals. And made it a point to visit his parishioners in their homes. Indeed for a basic glass of tea. This individual contact did ponders for individuals. And gradually but without a doubt. Their state of mind begun changing. They made room for their unused pioneer in their hearts. And begun taking note the extraordinary qualities this youthful minister had. Before long sufficient. 
Everyone settled into this and used reality. Father Gregory too expanded his hand past the individuals of his assembly. Indeed on the off chance that individuals did not share his confidence. He would not pass them by when it came to loaning and making a difference hand. Being charitable, or indeed supplicating for them. Without saying much. He cultivated an altar within the hearts of his church. And the individuals begun respecting him for the down-to-earth. Honest to goodness individual he was. Of course, it would have been as well incredible of an inquire. For everyone to be on board. There were still a number of individuals. Who would not let go of the bequest of their past parishioner. And were continuously trying to find a reason to blame their youthful pioneer. On the off chance that conceivable. They would indeed attempt to capture him to uncover his genuine colors. In a way, Father Gregory was as well great to be genuine. Eliza was a youthful dowager who lived within the town. Her spouse had been the adorer of her life. And after his passing, it taken quite a while for her to find her feet again. She was as of now included within the church at the time of Father Michael. But when this enthusiastic and used pioneer came, she found her genuine calling. It was her enthusiasm to work with the destitute and the poor. And she got to be a right hand to him in most of the ventures. Of course, there was chatter. But both Eliza and Father Gregory were given to their callings. They got to be awesome companions, and at long last. Eliza felt at peace. She would spend many hours supplicating within the church. And go to early morning supplications each day. The environment interior the haven gave her the quality to do all. That was required in a day without feeling misplaced. One morning, fair after finishing her supplication. When she opened her eyes. The primary beams of the sun begun playing through the recolored glass windows. She sat there in wonder. It was as on the off chance. That the rays of the sun were moving on a wooden floor before the lectern. She nearly missed the opportunity. But at that point she recalled that she had her cell phone with her. And begun recording the scene before her. Father Gregory had fair entered the church himself and taken note Eliza before the church, bowing and delicately murmuring his tune. The minute was lovely, and he did not need to intrude on it, so he stood there at the back, too taking within the magnificence of creation. When, without caution, Eliza dropped to the floor, Father Gregory ran to the front. Eliza appeared inert. Impulses, the cleric begun imploring. He released the scarf around Eliza's neck to permit oxygen to stream. He might feel no beat or breathing. So he begun doing CPR. Luckily, this was something he was prepared in. He managed little breaths whereas rhythmically attempting to pump up her heart. At that point he called out for offer assistance. Not anticipating anyone to reply his call at this early hour of the day. Be that as it may. A commotion at the back of the church caught his eye. It was a bunch of ladies who had orchestrated to meet. That particular morning for supplication. When they saw Eliza lying on the floor. And the youthful cleric with his mouth on hers and his hands on her chest. They promptly put two and two together. Of course, this modern pioneer was as well great to be genuine. He had clearly attempted to tempt destitute, forlorn Eliza. And when she had denied his consideration, he had hurt her in dissatisfaction. At slightest, that's what they all thought. Call the police, one lady yelled. I knew it. This untouchable was never the man he imagined to be. Another prattle announced. The ladies didn't allow Father Gregory to clarify. And indeed on the off chance that he was gambling his notoriety. By proceeding to perform CPR. He chosen to do something surprising. Rather than clarifying himself to the ladies. He kept breathing into Eliza's lungs with his mouth. At that minute. Her well-being took need over his astuteness. Gratefully. By the time he was physically dragged absent from her body by two burly men. 
the youthful lady was breathing once more. Within the chaos and disarray that taken after. The emergency vehicle and police turned up at the same time. Eliza was hurried to the clinic. Whereas Father Gregory was cuffed and taken into guardianship. He attempted to guard himself at that point. But the women's adaptation of the story was drastically diverse from his. They chosen that it was divine mediation that they were there that day. And chosen to proceed their supplication assembly. In any case. They supplicated that Eliza would recoup from this stunning assault. Which Father Gregory would get equity for his activities. As they were around to take off after their session. One taken note the cell phone lying on the wooden floor. It was Eliza's. When she picked it up. The lady taken note that it was still recording. She halted the recording and begun playing it back. Considering it would give conclusive proof against the priest. She called all the ladies to come and see what happened to Eliza. That appalling morning. And they all held their breath as the truth unfurled some time recently their eyes. Unnecessary to say. The ladies before long had to hang their heads in disgrace. Here was their parishioner attempting everything conceivable to assist destitute Eliza after what looked like a sudden heart assault. All the time that he was regulating CPR. He was imploring intensely for divine mediation to spare Eliza's valuable life. Without knowing that the camera was shooting him. They had bounced to their possessed conclusions. And caused their parishioner a colossal disgrace and mortification. One of the ladies called the police station to explain what had happened. Whereas another took the phone with the proof. They had caused so much harm with their partiality and closed minds. In case Father Gregory surrendered and cleared out after that shocking trial. It would be their blame solely. But what the youthful cleric did another was nothing brief of a wonder. When he returned from the police station. All the blameworthy ladies were still holding up at the church to apologize. But some time recently any of them might indeed say a word. Father Gregory talked. Women, I appreciate your extraordinary concern for your companion Eliza. Thank you for asking all the time for her full recuperation. The clinic has educated us that she will be a firm. She endured a heart assault. But there's no incredible damage. As for me, I forgive you for what happened. Forgiveness is one of the most excellent blessings. We are able allow each other within the name of God. Presently, I assume all of you have got numerous things to do nowadays. So see you all tomorrow at Mass and be favored. The ladies were stunned by his response but at last caught on. That he genuinely implied every word he lectured from his platforms. Day after day, and from that day on. Not one individual within the town had an awful word to say around. The unimaginable Father Gregory. What a surprising story. Would you have got expected the most noticeably awful? As well in case you had found the cleric slouched over the unmoving lady. And would you've got effortlessly excused the ladies in Father Gregory's shoes? Tell us within the comments underneath. Thank you for observing. And see you another time.